مشاهدينا الكرام اهلا وسهلا بكم Welcome to this special program. We're in Istanbul, in Turkey, where Foreign Minister Hakan Fidan talks to Al Jazeera. Shukran laka anta li anaka khassasta lana hada alwaqt rab ma anaka. Foreign Minister, thank you for taking the time to talk to us despite just returning from Germany, where of course Gaza was part of your discussions. However, there is a notable disappointment in Turkey because it is accused of not walking the talk when it comes to Gaza. Could you elaborate on the reasons behind this? I reiterate it once again. I cannot accept these accusations. Turkey has always been interested for years in and working for the Palestinian cause, doing all we can. For years, the president of Turkey, as well as the Turkish people, are very sensitive to this cause. And I'll give you an example. When the recent crisis of Gaza erupted, we headed to the Turkish parliament, presented a brief to all the political parties represented in the parliament, and we demonstrated the perspective of the government. Turkey has been supporting Gaza for years, namely in the reconstruction efforts, working also towards bringing the Palestinians together and also working for the status of Jerusalem. This is our policy and our strategy. We are doing at all fronts, uh, diplomatic and elsewhere. Yes, that was prior to October 7. Still, at the same time, as you are doing all this work for Gaza, there were strong rapprochement efforts between Turkey and Israel. And there was a meeting in New York with Prime Minister Netanyahu and Turkish President Erdogan to promote this rapprochement, including significant economic projects. As you know, uh, after October 7th, the position of Turkey is different than before. Before that, there was a sentiment of normalization across the region. Turkey wanted to be a constructive part to a policy. However, there is no change with respect to Turkish uh, policy towards Gaza. Thousands of Palestinians were killed in Gaza, and we cannot operate as if nothing had happened. Yes, again, our strategy, our policy is that we look at the region from the same perspective. We want to be a constructive, positive player economically and politically. The region must live on and must be robust, but yet it cannot be achieved without resolving the Palestinian conflict. It cannot be achieved without the two-state solution, and without that, there would be no normalization. Mm -hmm. Foreign Minister, the two-state solution is distant now. It's been failing for 30 years. Let's talk about what is happening currently. The priority now is to stop the Israeli war on Gaza. You went to Riyadh and you participated in the Arab Islamic Summit, where 57 nations decided to break the siege on Gaza. A month and a half later, the situation remains the same. Gaza is still under bombardment, starvation, being massacred, killings taking place and so on. You decided to break the siege. So what is the primary obstacle? Who is stopping it? This is a very important question. As you know, our policy is based on two principles. The first is to achieve an immediate immediate ceasefire. Also, the delivery of relief aid into Gaza immediately without delay. During the first and second wars on Gaza, we played a mediatory role between the two parties without losing sight of achieving a ceasefire. Now, together with a ceasefire, we must focus on the two-state solution. Otherwise, there will be a third, fourth, and fifth war on Gaza, and in order to steer away from this, we must achieve the two-state solution. We 
attended the summit in Riyadh. Very important decisions were handed down during the summit. And also, Turkey had taken very decisive decisions with the Arab and Muslim states, we have covered a long way ahead. We believe that we demonstrated our solidarity with the Palestinians, and we must look at the summit from this perspective. Our brothers in Gaza are asking, you met and made decisions, but what is the fruit? Our brothers are being slaughtered and our blood is shed. These are very important questions, including the question about the relief aid. The Arab and Muslim countries must get together, get united, support each other, and bank on their resources. Foreign Minister, these words may sound generic and loose. Do you have a mechanism in place to break the siege? And why hasn't it been broken yet? As of today, with respect to the siege, there is a siege laid to Gaza, and this siege is based on a military solution. The Arab and Muslim countries must work towards solving this issue. We are still discussing this issue, and we are using all conceivable diplomatic tools, working together with all the concerned parties to stand up to the Israeli wrongdoing, the Israeli violation. We are working with the Asian, European countries, as well as the United Nations at all fronts. We wish to put an end to the Israeli systematic killing that entails all the Palestinians. We are adopting diplomatic tools. However, there are other tools to be used. Some issues are known to the media, others are not. We have a work group made up of seven states. Turkey is one of them, together with Indonesia, Nigeria, uh, Jordan, Qatar, and Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. We are working on uh, specific mechanisms. Representatives from these countries will meet together on the coming days in different capitals and will see what uh, the results will be. As you know, some decisions were made during the Riyadh summit and we called for ending the siege. Please forgive me for interrupting, but regarding the Seven Nation Committee you mentioned, what are its objectives? You have already met in Riyadh. What will this committee meet for? As I said, it is made up of 57 states, and this committee is formed from the decisions made by the 57 states. It will follow up the implementation of these decisions, uh, chiefly is to rally our efforts and uh, our to lobby in order to have the voices of those 57 uh, Arab and Muslim countries heard worldwide. We wish to work together, and I believe that this committee will come up with very significant decisions. And I repeat it once again. The Organization of Islamic Cooperation, for the first time, is taking a tangible measure of a seven-member committee that will bolster the endeavors of all the 57 states. Foreign Minister, with the clock ticking for both this committee and the Palestinians, is there more time for the committee to meet, create it, and visit other countries? Is there time for all of this? What prevents Egypt from opening the border crossing? You have communicated with your Egyptian counterpart, Samah Shukri, two days after the summit. What is really preventing the border crossing from opening? Egypt is doing all they can. Egypt is doing all in their power. However, there are very critical, sensitive issues. Egypt is cooperating and coordinating with Saudi Arabia and Qatar and others. Egypt is doing all their best in order to have the relief aid delivered, the relief aid received in Al Arish airport. However, there must be some sort of coordination with Israel, and we believe that this coordination now has come to a halt.
the quantities of relief aid is reduced. We are doing all what we can in order to have this relief aid delivered with or without coordination. Regardless, we take any coordinated measures with Israel. Yet, this rests in the Egyptian hands. Egypt can do and say what they believe fit. Foreign Minister, there is so much Turkey can do as a nation. It is a strong nation, at least to boycott. Some non-Islamic states have preceded Turkey by pulling out their Israeli ambassadors. Turkey was late to do that. There is also the issue of cutting diplomatic ties. Why is Turkey late in taking action to sever diplomatic relations with Israel completely? Please, let's first talk about the diplomatic and political aspects before delving into the economic part. This is an important question. While addressing such a crisis, we have taken a preliminary decision that's to move hand in hand with other states. We cannot take a unilateral decision in order to be effective. That's why we wish our brothers to cooperate, that if such a decision is made, it must be unanimous in all the world states, even in Latin America. In order to have an effective, powerful decision, it must be uh, unanimous. It must be taken by all the countries concerned together. When we addressed these issues, we suggested and proposed severing relations or freezing relations, a boycott. However, any decision must be collective and unanimous. So without a collective decision, Turkey will not proceed with this action? Yes, we can take a unilateral decision. However, it must be collective, unanimous, in order to be more effective. Turkey can take a unilateral decision. This is what happened in the past, but I believe it must be unanimous in order to be more effective. The Arab nations. You are aware of the situation in the Arab world. If you are waiting for Arab countries that have normalized relations with Israel to sever diplomatic and political ties, you will have to wait a long time. Yes, we realize this. Uh, history has it, and you can think this way. We must make it clear, with any crisis, we must work together. We cannot act on unilateral basis. Such a crisis must be resolved by all uh, Arab and uh, Muslim states collectively. They must stand together. We believe that we can do more. We can move forward together instead of having unilateral measures or decisions. If we work collectively, our uh, decisions will be more effective, more powerful. For sure, the effect will be more substantial if severing ties with Israel comes as a collective move. The position will be much stronger. But given the circumstances as we know them, there will not be a joint position. So can Turkey take an independent stance in cutting diplomatic ties with Israel, including economic exchange, because there are ships that are going back and forth to Israeli ports? We know that trade between Turkey and Israel signifies some $9 billion. Will Turkey take a position to cut economic ties with Israel? All these issues are thinkable, can be thought of. Turkey cannot take a unilateral measure without other Arab and Muslim countries taking similar measures. Certain measures must be taken at the regional level, others at the Arab and Muslim world level. All these uh, measures and all these decisions are subject to discussions. Uh, however, there is no ceiling to the response. However, if our moves, decisions and measures are collective, it will be more powerful, more impactful and more effective. We must learn from the past lessons. We must be united.
From what you are saying, I understand that if this step is taken collectively, you will also join. But if it isn't, then you won't. You may object to this, but this is what we understand. No, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. What I'm saying is, certain measures can be taken on a unilateral basis. We can sever relations. This is not a problem. We can sever relations with Israel. Yet, what we wish to focus on is the most impactful means, the most effective measure. You know, following the Marmara incident, we severed relations with Israel. You know that the president, the people of Turkey, can take any unilateral decision they believe to be fit. Why hasn't a collective decision been taken? As I said earlier, decisions can be made. We can take a unilateral measure, yet there are certain measures that be, must be taken at the Arab and Muslim level, and there are also future decisions to be taken. I would like to focus on one thing, that there is injustice done in Gaza. Also, in the Western world, namely the United States, all the world stand watching in silence as a talking of acceptance of this injustice. This makes the Arab and Muslim world broken. Therefore, I believe there is going to be a future crisis. At the same time, there is room for the Arab and Muslim countries to work and to be more effective, but it must be collectively. You have followed the Russian war on Ukraine and witnessed how the U.S. led an economic, political and military boycott on Russia. If Turkey creates an alliance against the Israeli aggression on Gaza, that may include the nations that have already severed ties with Israel, wouldn't that be a solid alliance to send strong messages to the U.S.? There is no impediment to this block, we, and we are thinking of this block, we are discussing this issue. However, we must work together with the Arab and Muslim states, the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. We did it in the past, as you know, Erdogan, the spouse of the Turkish president, uh, organized and hosted uh, a meeting requesting the spouses of uh, world leaders to come and convene in Istanbul for a collective measure. However, we know that there are countries neighboring to Palestine, in addition to the Arab and Muslim states, they must act together. And we are prepared then to work with the African and Latin states. So this idea exists? Yes, yes. And even China and Russia, given that they are among the most powerful countries, is this possible? Definitely, yes. BRICS nations, for example, can they join? Definitely, yes, it is. It is possible. As you know, in the coming days, I spoke about the seven-member committee that will be meeting shortly. They will be headed to Be Beijing, uh, uh, Moscow, London, and we, will, we must work towards widening the scope of our efforts. Foreign Minister, you met with U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken. What specific aspects of a ceasefire were discussed? We uh, expressed our views openly that Turkey wished to see this injustice come to a stop, an immediate lasting ceasefire, swift delivery of relief aid without delay, and the forcible transfer of the Gazans is not acceptable at all. However, we could not reach an agreement with him that the United States were not full-heartedly supporting Israel towards a ceasefire. The United States is not willing to see a ceasefire established, but with respect to the relief aid, we have covered a long way ahead. If the United States continues to remain silent and continues to support Israel, 
uh, especially with the killing of women and children in Gaza, this will open horizons for a more dire crisis. There are certain principles that cannot be waived. We explain to them that you are willing to create a lynch law style world, that you approve of the killing of the Gazans, yet uh, we explain to them you turn a blind eye to the murdering of the Palestinians while you outcry your concern if any Israeli is killed or injured. Coming back to the current situation and Turkey's relationship with Hamas, given the presence of Hamas leadership in Turkey, what is the future of this relationship, especially considering President Erdogan's refusal to label Hamas as a terrorist group? Additionally, is there any pressure from Western countries on Turkey to categorize Hamas as a terrorist organization? Hamas is one of the political parties uh, of Palestine. M many countries worldwide recognize Hamas. We cannot describe or label Hamas as a terrorist organization. However, we realize that many states are adopting the Israeli view viewpoint, namely those in the West. We denounce any violence against civilians as uh, we condemned the killing of civilians in Gaza, we earlier condemned the killing of civilians in Israel. Hamas is a liberation movement. Once the occupation comes to an end in Gaza and Palestine, Hamas will be an organization like any other organization in Palestine or worldwide. In light of the ongoing situation with Hamas and other organizations, specifically concerning the captives, and knowing that the exchange negotiations have been put on hold, could you clarify Turkey's involvement in these talks? Does Turkey collaborate with Qatar on the issue of the captives' exchange? We are in close cooperation with the state of Qatar in this respect. Qatar has been acting very effectively and actively since the eruption of this crisis. Qatar played a great mediatory role between Hamas and Israel. They are doing unbelievable efforts, and we are doing all what we can to contribute to these efforts. Considering the recent threats by Israeli officials to use nuclear bombs on Gaza, how does Turkey assess the potential threat posed by Israel's nuclear capabilities to the region, and specifically to Turkey? Israel is still in position of nuclear power, and this is a big problem. Ridding the region from nuclear weapon will have very negative, dire impact on the region and the whole world. It undermines the world peace and security, either to have an entire region free of nuclear weapon or allow other countries in the region to possess one in order to create balance. Thank you for raising this question. Thank you for raising this question. However, this is a strategic problem that must be addressed and resolved. And finally, returning to our initial discussion and considering that the people of Gaza are likely watching this interview, what message would you like to convey to them? And what support or assistance can Turkey offer to Gaza? To our brothers in Gaza, I say, before anything, may God accept in his mercy your fallen martyrs. You are not alone. You are not alone. We will do all in our power to help you. Today, we accepted more than 50 wounded victims from Gaza and will continue to receive your victims. We will continue to rally support for your cause. And Turkey, together with other countries, many countries in Latin America, Africa, uh, Arab and Muslim countries, doing all what they can to help you, including to have Israel tried before the International Criminal Court. You had your blood shed, and your bloodshed 
caused the whole world to wake up to understand that there is injustice by the imperial states and the superpowers of the world. And this is, per se, is very significant. Foreign Minister Hakan Fidan, thank you for talking to Al Jazeera.